course of the media these days, we work in a very headline-oriented world. I read a headline about you guys, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Um, good Charlotte, no longer young and hopeless, now rich and famous. So, sounds good. It <laughs> so, sounds like a good headline to me. Um, hey, man, I'll, we'll take any good headline anybody wants to throw at us. You know what I mean? Sounds like a good, like a good headline to me, but... Uh, we're not complaining. No complaints with my life. I, I love my life. <laughs> so rich and famous isn't so bad. I mean, you know, we don't walk around all day and say, like, we're think rich like and we're rich and famous. But if someone wants to call you that, it feels like a compliment to me unless it's some kind of backhanded, but I don't think so. But, uh, yeah, no, nah, we're all good. No complaints here. We're happy. We're happy with our lives. And uh, good I think bad. no matter where your life goes, though, uh, however you were raised or came up or, you know, whenever whatever you kind of – uh, when in your formative years, I think that kind of spirit always kind of lives in you, you know, so I still, I, I, uh, my life's very different than it was, you know, 15 years ago. Uh, thank God. Um, and you know, I think, um, really yeah, you never change. really change no matter what, you know, just go through different experiences. Well, you can become adults. Older, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course you get the big guy from ESPN giving you fantasy football tips. That never hurts either. Yeah. Matthew Barry. When Matthew <laughs> Barry is tweeting you during fantasy exactly. football season. Those yeah, are the perks. Yeah, you right. made it. Yeah. Exactly. We got Joel and Veggie from Good Charlotte here on the Ralphie Radio Show. Obviously a lot's changed since what, like 10 years ago when you guys put out your first album. Touring has got to be a little different as well now that you're a father and you're an uncle and the kids are with you. Yeah. You know, the kids come out here and there and that's always different. It's like it's two different kinds of touring, you know, then there's the touring with the, without the family, which is kind of like a little dad vacation you know for like you know and then they come out for a week here or there and uh and um then that's like full-time family but it's a nice mix you know i mean it's i got a lot of balance in my life these days so i still have a good time you know i mean i still like to to go out and have and tear it up when i can but um it's just not like it used to be where i do it a lot obviously we're not you know like we were when we were 20 years old everyone's kind of they're grown-ups now so mm -hmm. now we all lead grown-up lives there's a lot of freedom in what we do so we we get to make our own rules and i think it's it's always been it's interesting because being in a band a lot of the times the stories you read about people and things that people kind of tear other people down for we get away with a lot more of it and we get kind of a free pass because we're in a rock band and we've been you know on the road for 12 years or something. Did you guys think that you would still be able to lead a grown-up life recording and touring? Or did you think that would happen once this all finished, which thankfully it hasn't? No, no. I yeah. think I think that was always the plan was to just do this as long as we could and still try to have normal lives too. It takes a certain type of person to, I guess, make music, you know? And um, it also takes a certain kind of a, like woman to be with a guy that's, you know, always gone here and there and traveling, making Got music. Got that understanding and the patience, yeah, you know? So. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, that latest album, Cardiology, is in stores now. We spoke um, when you guys called in about Like It's Your Birthday and, and Sex on the Radio. Uh, my favorite track on the album, though, is 1979. Talk about that a little bit. Binge wrote that song. You know, any of our real fans who have um, been with us through the years that have all the records have heard the stories about when we were younger and the things our family went through and kind of, I wanted to... Most of them have been, you know, the tougher stories, you know, and and, um, and I wanted to write a song about the good times, you know, and on and, um, the good memories. So uh, this was a this was my this was a really important song on the record for me. You know, um, it just really tells the story about when my parents were still in love, you know, and things were good, you know, because uh, I have good memories, too. You know, and I and as I've gotten older, I've kind of really started really thinking about the good more memories more than the bad memories. That's got to be tough as you get older to think about the good more than the bad and then to, you know, r write a really good song about it. And Well, it's easy. It's usually easier to write about kind of the negative, you know. Um, that's kind of where it, when you're younger, you have all your angst and all your aggression, and that's what you ch tend to. And as you get older, I find that people who don't grow up continue to cling to the negative and people who do grow up are the ones who start to look at the positive and I wouldn't change a thing because I think everything that we ever went through is why we're here today why why we were able to survive and why we were able to kind of make it in this kind of industry which is a tough one to make it in um so I'm really thankful for everything you know so um as yeah I guess as you get older you start looking at the good more than the bad you know so.